really cold in here. Can you turn on the heat? I can't. There's no power. The heater doesn't work. What? Well, where's our backup system? I'll go find it. Thank you. Okay, so we're not the best actors, but we wanted to have a little bit of fun with this video. Basically, what happens for you when it's winter time and you lose grid power? Unfortunately, most heaters in houses today require electricity to run the blower motor, to run the ignition source if you're on natural gas. If you're running oil heat like we are, you need electricity to also run not only the blower motor, but also the um, uh, blower motor for forcing air into the burning chamber plus the pump to pump up the oil. So the second you lose grid power, you have no way to heat a house, especially like us. We're living in a rented townhouse. It doesn't have a fireplace. It has an electric stove, so you can't even run like a propane stove in your kitchen to create a little bit of heat if the power goes out. So how do you emergency heat your house to keep yourself and your family warm? You could go kerosene, but in our opinion, it's too messy. You can spill it real easy. It gives off a really bad smell. And the track record for kerosene heaters on a safety standpoint is not that good. Now, personally for us, we love propane. It works good, and it also stores indefinitely. Once it's in the tank, the only thing that's ever going to go bad is the tank itself. It'll rust and get bad, but the tanks are usually rated for at least 12 years to begin with. So as long as you keep it in a dry, cool area, the original paint that's on the steel tank will stay good. Now I'm sure I'm going to get a ton of comments from people saying you're not supposed to store or use propane tanks inside the house. We'll get back to that in one second and I'll show you how a little bit of common sense you can operate propane safely inside of a house and you're not going to blow yourself up. What we ended up getting is called a uh, Big Buddy by Mr. Heater. These retail for about $140 brand new. And it will put out as three uh, heat settings, low, medium, and high. On high, you can get 18,000 BTUs. That will heat a fairly sizable room, say 20 by 30 or so, like a good portion of like a first floor of a house. More efficiently is, if you're in a, like a blizzard or something that you really need to keep warm, it's much better and more efficient if you go into the master bedroom or like a... 18 by 15 room, if you have a small enough family, fit everyone in here, give them a few books, ride out the storm, and you can run it on low. We usually use it in our master bedroom, which is 15 by 18. We can turn it on low, which is 4,500 BTUs, and it will raise the temperature in this room from 60 to 80 within about 20 minutes, and we end up turning it off and on periodically. So the propane actually lasts us when we're home a 20 pound tank you usually use for your grill will last us three to four weeks easily. Now, for a safety standpoint, all you have to do to, so you can operate it safely is one, have a working nose because the second you crack open propane, you'll smell it. Number two is make sure you have like a 12 foot extension hose which runs from your uh, heating device to your tank. When you connect and disconnect, when you first pressurize it, you open up the tank and let pressure flow into it. One, listen. If you hear a hiss, turn it off. You know something's leaking. It's not safe. And if that does happen, open a window, vent out the room for a few minutes, and you're okay. There's no explosion hazard. If you turn on the tank and there's no hissing, next thing to do, before you even think of lighting the pilot light, is you just grab something that bubbles, whether it be a little bit of Dawn detergent mixed in with a spray bottle, shake it up, it makes bubbles, or like Windex, it makes enough bubbles. All you have to do is take it and spray it a few shots right on the fitting itself. If the fitting is leaking, it will bubble. Same when you connect into the actual device itself. Just give it a quick little spray. You'll see. If it's leaking, it'll start bubbling. Once you know 
Now you have no propane leaks. You don't smell anything, nothing's bubbling, nothing's hissing. Now it's safe to light the machine. With these ones it's real easy. You just press down, give it a few seconds, almost that pilot light, so it primes the pilot light. One little click, and the pilot light's lit, and you have to hold it down for about 10-15 seconds to heat up that little thermal couple so it senses that it has a working pilot light. It's a safety feature that's built into it and with most propane heaters that this way the pilot light goes out it will automatically shut off all the fuel. Let go and you can go straight to high from here. All the way up. You'll see both of them. A nice blue flame on them real quick. It takes about one minute for the ceramic tiles to warm up. And probably in about one minute, it's going to get so warm as those tiles heat up and it starts radiating heat out. I don't want to back off from this thing. And you can probably see on the camera, they're just starting to glow right now. On this setting, on a 20 pound tank, you can usually get about 20 hours worth of continuous run time. But normally, we run it on low only. Because we're in such a, we're in a smaller room, so it heats up really quick. You only have the left tile on, such as right here. We'll leave... Now we're on medium, which this only the left tile will glow and work. And you'll notice as I drop it back down to low, the tile will glow less. The right tile is just for the high setting. It's just a high amount of fuel coming through it. So it's giving off a lot of heat right now. If I switch it down to low, you'll see the glow goes down. It's not giving as much fuel. This is 4,500 BTUs. It'd probably warm up a little bit more, glow a little bit more, but... This is a very safe and easy way to heat your house in an emergency. Or, like we also use it, we use it for spot heating at night to save energy. We turn down the thermostat, we don't have to heat the whole house because we're not in it. Just heat the one little room, it stays a bundle on home heating oil. And best thing is, all you have to do is go to garage sales or whatever, find a good used tank or multiple tanks, and have them filled up. Keep the extra tanks since they're not connected to anything and the fitting's still exposed. Even if you put a plastic protector on it, it's still kind of exposed. It's not really sealed. Those ones you keep outside in a cool, dry spot because you never know if that seal might break or might start leaking because there's nowhere to catch it. There's no hose connected to it at all. The hose is behind me. This way you can have four, five, ten tanks sitting at ready for you and the fuel is good indefinite indefinitely it's not like gas diesel or uh, kerosene which breaks down over time propane is good indefinitely so this is what we use and it's perfect for emergency heating and if you're actually if you're mechanically inclined which i hope you would learn that as a trait especially as a prepper it saves you a lot of money we actually got this used at the farmer's market for $40 and the problem with it was the pilot light wouldn't work correctly it wouldn't come out with a nice little blue flame it would just be a lazy so I gave the guy 40 bucks brought him home I figured I'd fix it I just have to replace the pilot light assembly come to find out he's had it sitting in his garage for over a year never cleaned it and the only problem with it was there was a small spider nest inside the hole for the pilot light as soon as I took a Q-tip, cleaned that on out, and cleaned the rest of the machine, fired up great. So, $120 machine for $40 and a half an hour's worth of basic work onto it. And it's been running great for us for two years now. So, the longevity on these things are great. If you have any questions, comments, go ahead and leave it down below. And trust me, I'll get back to you. Thank you.